Hello there. So in this video, I'm going to tell you why I regret getting an energy supplier smart meter. This video is also going to contain some sort of general in bits of information about changing your energy supplier or changing your energy tariff, because to be brutally honest, I think the way that some energy suppliers operate, it's verging on a scam and it shouldn't be allowed. And there are some really important things that you should look out for. I got a smart meter in about August last year. I made a video at the time giving you the advantages of a smart meter and I really loved it for a month or two. They're great because they show you your precise energy consumption and you know you kind of learn what's normal so when it spikes up you realize that actually you've left you know the battery charger on when you shouldn't have done or perhaps you've got a failing device in your house or a really old power hungry device so i had a fridge freezer that was probably about 15 20 years old and the compressor in it was a bit knackered the seals on it were kind of rotten and it was letting out cold air so basically as a result it was permanently working at full power using a lot of power costing me a fair amount of money so I was able to use my smart meter to diagnose that and I bought a replacement freezer which is much quieter and more energy efficient and I actually calculated that it would pay for itself in like a couple of years plus all my food would actually be properly frozen so yeah they're pretty good in that regard. Now, that video was quite interesting because I received a huge backlash from a community of people that I didn't even realize existed. So there is actually a whole group of people out there who apparently their reason to be is to go around criticizing people who have smart meters um, and spreading fear that smart meters cause uh, serious health concerns and that it's a big conspiracy by the government and energy suppliers to make us all ill. Mind you, if we're all ill, how are we gonna pay our energy bills and pay our taxes? Doesn't seem like the most sensible cover up and conspiracy in my eyes. But anyway, all that stuff was rubbish. I looked into it myself, a smart meter. In fact, the thing I showed you in the video isn't the smart meter. It's the kind of digital readout that communicates with the smart meter. It uses standard radio waves in the order of whatever it was. I think it was either uh, mobile phones or Wi-Fi. These are all things that we got around our house and that we have all the time. These are low energy waves that don't cause any health concerns. And to claim that they do is just not only incorrect, but actually um, irresponsible. There was a recent case of a thing with 5G, which I'm not really going to go into, and I may have to cut this out. People were getting injured because of a result of these ridiculous conspiracy theories and fear being spread about radio waves that just is not true. And the key thing is that the communication bands that overlap with these higher frequency waves, they are low power. So they couldn't possibly cause any harm. We've had these things for decades. They're not a problem. And the same is true of the smart meters. To get back to the original point, they are completely safe. I've got one and I'm completely normal. But all that rubbish aside, and that's not why I decided I didn't like a smart meter, I came across a bit of a problem. So I got a phone call, I think it was an unsolicited phone call actually, from um, a company claiming to operate on behalf of E.ON, I think it was, asking me uh, whether or not I wanted to change energy supply. In fact, it's much more devious than that. They say, oh, you know, you're going to be on the phone for a couple of minutes, um, and we'll swap you over. Do you mind if I ask you some questions? It won't take very much of your time. And then half an hour later, you're still on the phone. I know because I've been bored sometimes and I've just kind of gone along with it. They ask you what tariff you're on. And if you don't know, they sort of guesstimate it, which, you know, a miss is as good as a mile. Let me put it that way. If they give you a load of calculations and cost savings and they're based on not the tariff you've actually got, then they might as well not have bothered. And quite how that's legal, I don't really know but they get out of it saying that you've got like a 14 day cooling off period where you can just cancel the whole thing and forget it all. I'll get onto the proper scam that they, uh, that they operate and the comparison websites operate later on in the video. So do stay tuned for that. But I moved over to Scottish Power from Eon uh, being told that this 
thing was cheaper, and I think it was cheaper, actually, in the end, in fairness. I was told that everything would be seamless, I wouldn't have to do anything, the smart meter would be compatible, probably, uh, and, uh, you know, everything would just carry on as normal. Well, it didn't, and my word, what a pain. So the transfer went through automatically and I was kind of oblivious for a month or two and then I started getting messages saying, you know, you need to give us your meter readings, you need to give us your meter readings. And um, I kind of ignored them because I thought, well, I've got a smart meter, so uh, everything must be fine. By this time, my smart meter was acting a little bit strangely, showing me very odd uh, numbers, showing me that my, I think my gas was free and that my electricity was very, very cheap. So the readouts on my smart meter were complete and utter rubbish at this point. And then um, I think I got a message saying, uh, you need to provide your meter readings by this date, or we're going to like basically guess your bill and it could be a disaster. So I got my meter readings, tried to submit them online, and it wouldn't work. Like the app, didn't work either. I couldn't physically submit my meter readings. It was a bit of a kind of nightmare when you just want to do something simple and carry on and you're told something will be seamless and it's not. So I phoned uh, Scottish Power and I was in a queue for ages and eventually I spoke to someone and said, look, my smart meter isn't working. I've got a smart meter. The readout on it is wrong. You want all these details. It won't let me into the meter readings. Oh, that's fine, sir. That's fine. Please supply your meter readings and we will update them to your account. Will my smart meter start working then? Yes. Well, it didn't. I did get a proper bill with my actual costs on, but I do wonder if the transition date of my energy supplier was a little bit of a guesstimate because obviously they have to find the exact switch over date and you know your energy usage up to that point is charged at your old rate and after that point is charged at your new rate. I don't think it was done properly but anyway I was told that everything would be hunky-dory from from now on. A few months later I got a bill through and it was you know based on estimated readings and it was just it was just nonsense. I still can't enter my meter readings properly on the Scottish Power website, um, but some of that is to do with their system, which says that it should be a five digit number, but it only accepts it when I put in like an eight or nine digit number. I phoned Scottish Power again and told them that it still wasn't working and it couldn't communicate with my um, meter. In fact, I think at that point I discovered that they hadn't actually charged me for any gas at all. So they told me, oh yes, we don't have your gas meter. Can you provide the whatever it's called number from the front of your gas meter? So I said, okay, I'll just, I'll go and look at my gas meter now. So I went outside, I think it was about January time, so it was pretty cold, I read all the numbers off there and they said, no, there should be a number that says this. And I'm looking around the meter, I'm reading every number on the meter, it's not on there. So they got me to send a photo of the meter to them so that they could, set it up themselves and in fairness they did set it up themselves and they took a gas meter reading and then they put my direct debit up by about 30 pounds a month because i'd been underpaying because my meter readings weren't accurate so now i'm at the stage where my um, direct debits have gone up to something like 75 pounds a month um, it's the summer months and I'm currently spending probably like £35 a month or something on my energy. So at least I'm going to build up a little bit of a credit balance for the winter when I start using the heating uh, a lot more. But yeah, the whole guesstimate thing um, is a bit crazy. And I've got a smart meter that's completely useless, doesn't communicate with Scottish Power and doesn't show me the proper usage statistics and costs so it's completely hopeless i dread having to take my meter readings and submit them to scottish power because it's never straightforward and it turns out there are different generations of smart meter and somehow even though i only had it fitted you know 10 months ago mine is the somehow the older generation that isn't compatible with all the different energy suppliers so i've got a useless smart meter now uh, that just sits there sucking power, valuable, expensive power. Never mind. But the other thing I was going to go on to say, and this is really 
probably the most useful thing you might get out of this video apart from probably don't get a smart meter unless you can be guaranteed that it's going to work for the different energy suppliers and that is what I consider to be a bit of a scam with the comparison sites and the energy suppliers when they quote you the cost of a new tariff. You're often quoted prices for new tariffs and they try to kind of compare like with like and tell you, you know, you could save 300 quid over the course of the year by switching to the summer 2021 tariff or something. You need to be very, very careful with that because that isn't all it seems. So when they do that, they compare some very unfair things. So say you're on a contract and you've been on a contract for say six months and it's a year long contract. You've got six months left of your contract. At the end of an energy supplier's contract, you will tend to roll over onto a kind of less favorable deal where the cost of everything goes up. A pretty standard thing, a bit like when you've got a, an introductory interest rate on a bank account and when that time limit expires, you go onto a 0.0001% interest rate. So if I was to keep my energy tariff that runs out in six months time, if I was to keep it for a year, I would overpay for six months. Well, comparison sites use that information. So when they compare your current tariff with their new tariff, they include that extra six months where you'll be overpaying and assume you just carry on onto the more expensive tariff and don't change. And they compare that with their favorable tariff that has the same standing charges for gas and electricity and unit cost um, for the entire duration of the contract for the next year. Well, it's not surprising in that case that you could save £300 by switching over to the new supplier. What they don't tell you is that for the remaining duration of your current contract, the new contract would be more expensive because either the standing charge is more expensive or the unit rate is more expensive. And another thing they don't tell you is that you might actually be better off keeping your current contract until it expires and then finding a better value one. So using a comparison site or even moving on to a tariff like the one they're suggesting. But to claim that the new tariff is better value, that isn't necessarily the best way for you to save money. And obviously you wanna do your own research. This is just my kind of personal experience of changing energy suppliers. If you want to compare tariffs, you need to do, you need to compare two values, the standing charge, which is the charge you pay every day, regardless of how much energy you use and your unit cost, which is how much per kilowatt hour of electricity or whatever they charge. You'll be able to get those figures easily for your current contract and the, the contract that they're putting to you, the provisional contract, compare those values, make sure there isn't any differences in night and day, look at your kind of average usage on a previous bill, calculate how much it will actually cost you. That will tell you whether or not the new contract is good value for money. I hope that information has been useful to you. My Patreons and channel members are scrolling down the screen now. Thank you to all of you. And thank you very much for the generous donations from George Foote, Magnanimous Meg, Paul Cotter and Zachary Van Dyke. Please let me know of your experience of having a smart meter down below. Would you have one? Have you experienced the same things that I'm talking about? I'd be interested to know that I'm not just going mad. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and I shall see you next time for another one.